Welcome to the show. I'm Dom Dumas, and I'm in Bangkok. I'm also the official podcaster of the SHL. Christian Olson of the Aware, episode 43. Uh, I'd like, as you heard in the at the beginning here, I have a guest on the episode, and that's Christian. Welcome to the show, Christian. Thank you very much, Dom. Uh, so, first off, I wanted, where are you from? <clears throat> I'm from uh, I'm from Sweden, small town in Sweden. Okay. Um, yeah, grew up there, uh, ten thousand people. Um, but uh, I left Sweden quite early. Okay. It's about twenty-two. I moved to uh, to Canada, and I've been uh, living living abroad ever since. So. Okay. Since twenty-two, you've been living abroad. Yeah. Wow. Now you say a small town of ten thousand. The town I'm from. Yeah. Is the 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 capital of the county or the county seat, what we call it in in Minnesota, and. It has two thousand people. Right. So, so me, that's a village. That's a village. No. We don't we don't call them villages in the states. <laughs> so what caused you to to leave? Uh, it was work related. Uh, mm -hmm. I uh, I was working for for a well known Swedish home furnishing company, and uh, <clears throat> and I was looking to to uh, I wanted to move abroad. I wanted to to experience the world. And uh, I used uh, used IKEA as a springboard and okay. uh, moved from uh, from Sweden to to Canada to Toronto. Okay, uh, are you still with IKEA? <clears throat> um, yeah, sort of. Uh, sort of. Well, okay. <laughs> here it's it's a bit complicated in Thailand. It's a joint uh -huh. venture. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's for sure IKEA related. I've been with them now for uh, for eighteen years. So wow, they must take quite care long. of you quite well. Uh, they do. They they move you to to some nice places, some not so nice places. Uh, okay. I'm very happy where I am now, but I've also spent time in in Siberia and Russia and so on. So so, uh, but 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 it's all been great, great, uh, great work uh, opportunities and and uh, mm -hmm. and so on. So yeah, so it's been good. Siberia and Russia. What was that like? Yeah, I was in Novosibirsk. I opened an IKEA store there. I was a project director for for the first IKEA store in in Siberia. Wow! Uh, it was a challenge, but <laughs> but but it was a lot of fun as well. Uh, some good hockey there as well. I was. Did you play? Uh, no, 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 no. I, I didn't play, but I was watching the the, the KHL there quite a lot. Okay. Um, it was actually a you know, funny story. There was a Swedish goalie there for for a year. The year when I was there. Okay. So uh, he, of course, ended up, you know, not having any any friends or anything in Novosibirsk either. So when I heard that he was he was coming, I reached out to him. So we ended up. Uh, I was there. My family was in in Moscow. I was living in in Novosibirsk. His wife was in Sweden. He was living in Novosibirsk. So we ended up uh, spending quite a lot of time together there uh, during that year in in, uh, okay. in Novosibirsk. Wow, that That's was cool. The, yeah, absolutely. So you you've lived in Canada. You lived in yep. Russia. Uh, now Thailand, any right. place else? Uh, nope, that's it. That's Many it. different places in in Russia. I was there seven years, okay. and now I've been here six years in Thailand. Okay, what's your favorite place? Well, I would say uh, opportunity and 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 job wise, it was fantastic to be in Russia there, two thousand and three okay. to two thousand and ten. That was uh, that really. Uh, I I basically grew up. Uh, I had my my two kids when I was living in. Uh, in uh, in Russia, so so in many ways that was a fantastic opportunity. But when it comes to quality of life, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's hard to beat uh, Bangkok. I can understand that. that yeah. I've lived in Thailand for eleven years, and yeah. Bangkok for the second time now for going on six years. I love it. Yeah. So I know you played some sports growing up. What did you play? Uh, yeah, I played. Uh, I played quite a lot of different sports. I was playing hockey from the age of uh, probably eight to to twelve. Uh, I was a goalie. Um, but uh, actually, I, I quit when I was about twelve. Picked up other sports instead. I played floorball, which is kind of a ball hockey indoor okay. uh, kind of thing. Uh, it's quite big in Sweden, one of the the largest sports there. So wow. I ended up, ended up playing that until I was about twenty twenty one. Um, okay. Played, uh, yeah, not yeah, played in the second division in 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 Sweden. Wow, um, like huge! You have divisions. You're that. It's that big. Yeah, yeah, it's big. It's I think it's the number one sport actually. I think it's bigger than soccer. Wow. Um, and I think uh, yeah, I think Sweden and Finland are you know, every year in in the finals in the world world championship of, of floorball. That, that's uh, quite amazing. It's quite small uh, small uh, sport still, but uh, it's Sweden and Finland dominating. Well, Switzerland too, I think. I I, I remember growing up, and yep. I'm a hockey player. I, yep. I grew up playing hockey. I played for 13 years growing up. But in schools, we also played floor hockey, which yeah. sometimes we had a ball, sometimes we had a foam puck or something like that. Very rarely was it anything 
like there was no division. Sometimes we'd right. have like a weekend tournament. A school would put together like ten teams, and yeah. that would be like the, the the extent of it. No, I know. I I I, I mean, my my friends in Canada, my 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 relatives, uh, they're all making fun of this sport, of course. For in, in, the, in, <laughs> in North America, it's not a sport. It's something you do in between breaks or maybe in PE sessions. But 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 uh, but actually, in, in Europe, you can actually you can be a professional floorball player and you can make good money. Okay. Uh, wow. So um, yeah, not bad. No, not at wow, absolutely. Because I like I that said, wasn't me though. Just to be clear, that wasn't me. I wasn't okay. making any money on this. But ah, uh, okay. Because yeah. like I said, it, I mean, we played it like well, we played street hockey. We but we also had like floor hockey that we played on gyms or in the spring we would play it on tennis courts and stuff like that. But it was yeah. like just normally a bunch of friends or whatever. So right. it's like quite big. It is. It is big. Uh, it kind of developed from from just being uh, sort of a PE activity, PE mm-hmm. sport. Um, also in Sweden, but but uh, really picked off steam in, in yeah I would say like early nineties, late eighties, early early nineties, wow. uh, and I think Sweden won the world championship the first sixteen years in a row or something like that. Wow! And then the Finns <laughs> uh, started to come back, and, and now it's sort of a battle between Sweden, Finland. I think Switzerland also has a has a pretty good national team there. That's amazing. What position did you play there? Do they have uh, the, like defense. the same same positions as hockey? Yeah, it's more okay. or less the same. When I was when I was playing hockey, I was a goalie. Mm-hmm. Uh, huge influence by by some of my relatives. Uh, they, they were they were netminders, so I was a goalie uh, from the age of eight to twelve. Then I quit hockey and I moved to floorball and uh, yeah, defense okay. defenseman. I'll tell you what, being a goaltender, I've played the position a few times. Yeah, it takes a special kind of person to stand there and take those shots. Yeah, absolutely. I I absolutely. couldn't do it. So. <laughs> no, uh, I guess I could only do it till, till I was again about twelve years old. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I got my my son now. He's sort of deciding if he's going to be goalie or a player. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, I agree with you. You need to be quite special. Um, you need to have, you need to be very focused, and and you need to be able to have a yeah, short memory. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, and you can't be one of those guys that are like, <laughs> it's kind of like in the NFL, the kicker. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the the extra point kicker. The, it takes the same type of mentality. You right. can't let that one miss get to you. No. It, oh, and you got to love the the big moments. Like mm. uh, absolutely. I, just if I may recall, it was one of the, one during one of the games, uh, uh, my son then who is a goalie, he, he he must have that sort of special mentality because he he, he was saying you know there was a, I think it was it was two one or two two with like one minute left they uh-huh. were pulling the goalie and and then. Uh, he was playing for a, he was an underage player in an, in an overage game. Okay. And the coach was sort of saying like, "Shall we throw in our our?" And he he was a backup goalie in this division. Uh-huh. And the coach was saying like, "Should we throw in our, our our good goalie?" You know. But my son was immediately saying that no 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 I want to play these thirty seconds I want to be the hero, and and that I think is uh, that's sort of a testament to what kind of mentality you need to have as a goalie because I think a lot of players would say yeah get me out of there you know let, let someone else uh, <laughs> that would have been somebody, me yeah, I'd have been like let, no, someone, I'm else, not, uh, let somebody else finish the game yeah. but my stepbrother on the same in the same breath he he had that mentality he was like yeah. never played hockey before until we met each other and he, he was a, a wrestler and he played indoor soccer in the winter he gave both of those up to start playing hockey mm-hmm. couldn't skate so he said all right i'll be a goaltender yeah one of the best goaltenders i'd ever seen oh. and he was just like he's like don't take me out yeah. i can do it yeah crazy They're crazy yeah. So we need good goalies. We don't have many here in Thailand, and we uh, it would be nice to have a few more. Well, if he if he's coming, he said he, <laughs> last time I talked to him, which was uh, just the other week, he said he still got his gear. So if he ever comes you to Thailand, I'll it. tell him to bring his gear. So. Sounds good. All right. So IKEA is what brought you to Thailand. Yep. Okay. In many ways, yeah. Okay. And how did you find out about hockey in Thailand? Uh, yeah, I think I've actually I had read something about that the the flying pharynx uh, uh-huh. in particular um, that there there, wa- there there was hockey to be to be played in in Thailand, but I had literally I had not played since I was twelve years old. <laughs> My last game I was a goalie. I'd never played out, um, and uh, I had no intentions of of playing here. I don't think. But but then after after working here uh, about a year, um, I just I just came to this realization that I. I needed something. Uh, I needed something different. I mean, mm-hmm. let's face it. We are we are we are very much aliens here, and, and yes. uh, the cultural uh, differences are, are huge. So I think I was just looking for for uh, to meet people with with similar interests mm-hmm. to sort of uh, find this uh, social oasis or or, or 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 a culture away from from uh, from what I was dealing with Monday to Friday. Mm-hmm. 
so uh, I said okay why why not I went and watched the uh, tournament and uh, and then I started to, to play in the in uh, what was then called the, the Thai World Hockey League the TWHL okay uh, so that was uh, that was about three years ago Okay. So that was my, my, my first game as a, as, a, as a skater, as a player, ever. And, uh, but, but yeah, I've, I, I really enjoy this uh, sort of, uh, it's, it's a recreational thing. Mm-hmm. It's just for fun, but, uh, but, it, but it's actually, I think it's prolonged a lot of things for me, prolonged my stay in Thailand, perhaps even. Okay. Um, just the fact that I, that I could find something that, that gave, me, gave me an outlet for, for something else, so. Uh, it's been great. I, I, owe, I owe a lot to, to hockey here in Thailand. That, that's interesting. I mean, because I, I kind of went through the same thing uh, when I was here the, in Bangkok the first time, um, and I didn't have anything in Chiang Mai, but I, that's kind of why I started doing yoga. I got into yoga. I'd never done yoga before. My wife finally convinced me to do it, and it was kind of the same thing. Yeah. But again, I was mostly surrounded by Thai people, um, mm-hmm. so again, I was the foreigner. And then when we moved back to Bangkok, I, I got... I mean, I studied Muay Thai, and again, again, I'm like one of the few foreigners that studied. I was the only the place I was studying at. I was the only person who studied Muay Thai. But then I started studying Japanese, uh, not Japanese. Sorry, started studying karate, mm-hmm. and I was their very first foreign student. I'm yeah. sorry, I was their very first Western student. Mm-hmm. Everybody else at the time was either Japanese or Thai. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. but it it was like I was still kind of the outsider. Yeah. So I never really had that, but. I don't know. It was kind of different. I mean, that yeah. kind of that drives me on to do a little bit, try a little bit harder and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. but so you played for the the Thai World Hockey League. Yeah. So that was three years ago. That that was the league that was available at that time, okay. um, and it was good. Uh, it was uh, it was a team of, of four teams, a league of four teams. Sorry, um, and uh, yeah, that was sort of my my first taste of of hockey in, in Thailand. It was a little bit. You know, I never really figured out, understood who was who was uh, who was behind the league. I knew uh-huh. a couple of guys that were that were that were vocal and sort of running the the, the show. Mm-hmm. But uh, but to me, it was still one of those little bit of a mystery of, of of how this all came together. And all of a sudden, there was a trade, or all of a sudden, there was you know some player went from one team to another, or there was something something going on uh, during the course of the of of the league and. Um, at hindsight and looking back at it i'm i'm, I'm amazed that that uh, that uh, first of all that there was a league that there was an opportunity to play in in thailand mm-hmm. and then also that that it was it, it was organized by by players and uh, just a, just a handful um or even just one or two of of uh, of the players were also actually also running the league and i can okay. just i can imagine how difficult it must have been you know right. trying to organize yeah. adults um and, and and a lot of different personalities and and uh, and people with different objectives and agendas mm-hmm. uh, and trying to get them organized to play to play a recreational league in 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 thailand must have been must have been extremely difficult oh i i have no doubt so you said you started playing with them about three years ago yeah that's funny because that's when I got my rollerblades, and I I was I struggled with that decision because it was like, do I want ice skates? Because I had talked to the people at Sub Zero about yeah. hockey, and they're like, yeah, well, there's a there's a league just for foreigners, and there's a league just for ties. Hmm. And then I was like, okay, well, that's interesting. I haven't played hockey since I was like 18, haven't skated since I was about 19. Yeah, uh, but I decided, uh, you know what, I'm, I'll go with rollerblades, you know, because I'm I felt at the time I was kind of done with hockey. Yeah. Watching you guys play, it's a different story now, but <laughs> that's that's a whole other topic. But uh, so you weren't involved in, in any way with behind the scenes. For no, the I wasn't. And and to be honest, I mean the first the first year I played here, it was more for me, uh, like I said, uh, to to uh, to find something else to do outside of outside of work. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just focused on on trying to learn the learn the, the ins and outs of, of playing the game like I, mm-hmm. I mentioned I'd never I never even skated uh, uh, and, and, and played ice hockey as a player my first TWHL game uh, as a defenseman was my first ever hockey game as, as a skater so to me I was just trying to trying to you know get into it again and 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 so on I wasn't paying too much attention to to how the league was organized mm-hmm. or anything like that okay <clears throat> and that was uh, yeah that was three years ago and then Two years ago, uh, yeah, yeah. And the, the following year, I also played in the in the TWHL, um, and uh, liked it a lot. It was great um, in many ways, but 
that was the final season of, of, of TWHL. After that, the league okay. folded. Okay. Um, and uh, it was basically a break of, of, of one year. And no one really knew if, if there was ever going to be a, a Did it fold again. or did it, they just say, we're going to take a break? Well, <clears throat> there was simply no one that wanted to pick up and, and organize it again. Uh. So, so um, I don't know all the stories from behind okay. my, 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 my history of hockey in Thailand. It really spans the last three years. Um, like I said before, I've, I have full respect for, for how you know, people were trying to run it at that time. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the only option last year was, was, the, uh, was the, the Bangkok Ice Hockey League, the BIHL, which okay. is the, 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 the Thai run league. Uh, they, have, they have more teams. Mm -hmm. uh, however, the, the, the level of players, the, there's a lot big, bigger gap. <coughs> yeah, uh, there's in, a in huge gap from <coughs> like just in range of, of, of skill of players. I right. noticed that just right. in the three games that I've seen. Yeah. So, um, but, but it's still, I mean, it's great. There's like yeah. 11, 11 teams, I think, in the BHL. Yeah, there was 11 teams this just past season. Teams, so, yeah. yeah. So, 11 teams, that's just a fantastic achievement in itself, I think. Absolutely. And uh, so, I, I ended up playing in, in, in that league. Um, which is also great, you know, getting getting uh, getting to know some of the Thai players and mm -hmm. and uh, making friends there also. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and was it hard? To get, I'm sorry, I don't yeah. mean to interrupt you. Was it hard to get into that league? Because, like I said, when I was talking to people about three years ago, yeah, um, it was like there's a Thai league, mm -hmm. there's no foreigners, yeah, and then there's the foreign league. So, was it hard for you to get into the Bangkok Ice Hockey League at um, the time, or did they just open up and said, okay, everybody can play? I, I, th I think what happened was that in, in the, f the first couple of seasons in the BIHL, they said that it was for sort of ties only. Uh -huh. uh, but then this, the, you know, each season there's been a, a steady inflow of, of foreign players as well. Okay. But I think that they've been quite selective in who they, who they actually invite. Okay. Um, and that's their prerogative, I guess. Mm. And um, so in, in the, the, last, the last year, the, 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 the season they just finished in September, mm -hmm. um, had quite a, quite a lot of, of foreign players, at least for in, in some of the teams. Yeah, the, absolutely. Your team in particular yeah. had quite a few, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Thunder, we, we had quite a few. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, to be honest, it just comes down to um, the, some of the players on that team are also the coaches of my kids. Okay. So when I started asking about, you know, what about the BIHL, they said, hey, why, why don't you join? Um, and then uh, I actually got a question as well. Can can you help us? We need some extra players. Who else would you? Th who else do you think would like to play? Okay. And that's when I got John on and some of the other some of the other guys as well. Okay, interesting. So um, what what I just think is great is that there's no there's no blockage in any way. There's no like no this is the Thai league and Ferns are not allowed to play and this is the Foreign leagues and, and the Thais are not allowed allowed to play. There's there's a good mix of of uh, of both there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think. I think that's a great thing because it helps everybody develop in a whole lot of areas, not just in hockey mm. itself. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, how did the SHL come about? I mean, you're you're a part of the the executive committee, the league committee. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, how did how did it come out? Come about? Yeah, um, yeah. First of all, we're trying to run this as a as a committee because we just know the toll that it takes on 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 the one or the two persons that are that are trying to run this league. So mm -hmm. that was one of the first things that we that we that we said. I, I got contacted by by Scott Murray and, and, and John, uh, actually, um, just asking if, if, if I had an interest of, of being involved and, and uh, they sort of uh, told me what their vision was and, and so on. And at that time, I, I just felt like, I, you know, I, I, w I really missed the, the TWHL. I wanted mm -hmm. to get back into to playing the whole year as well, not just the, the BIHL season. I, mm -hmm. I really wanted to, to play hockey 12 months out of the year if I could. Okay. So, um, yeah, the, they asked me if I was interested in, in, in helping out, and uh, I think it was it was just a matter of timing because at that time I was also feeling that okay, I, I want to give something back. I want to give. I want. I'm going to do something for 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 hockey in Thailand. Uh, it had helped me during the first three three years, and if I can provide something similar for someone else, I would I would love to to do that. And uh, we put a committee together, seven people. So so okay. we we help each other, and we sort of push and pull, and and. Uh, and uh, get things done through that committee. Okay, I think that helps uh, tremendously. Uh, quite a diverse, diverse uh, group of guys. Uh, mm -hmm. So we got a couple of ties. Uh, Jeb running the the, the refs, Referees, uh, yeah. right? And Pratch doing doing helping us with the marketing. Okay. Uh, and then we got Alice there on the financial side. We got Alex, who is a 
a godsend uh, you know uh, spent so much time at the rink and and uh, yeah I, uh, I'm, my plan is to get him on the show too because yeah, i'd like you to should. know how he got absolutely. involved so absolutely um and, and we got to try to find a replacer for him the word is that he's that he's leaving uh, maybe next year so really so, so trying to trying to find someone that 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 uh, that can do the work that he does is, is not going to be easy. Okay. Um, but that's the way it is, I guess, everywhere where where hockey is played. Doesn't matter if it's a mature market or, or or a market like Thailand. You need those, you need those volunteers. Yeah, and the guys absolutely. That, that don't mind, uh, you know, uh, spending a Sunday night at the at the rink when you got a family at home mm-hmm. and, and so on. So um, yeah, we we need, we need some more Alexes here in, in in Bangkok for sure. Well, I'll tell you what, I was so shocked when you guys contacted me after doing the the podcast and vlog about the bihl and wanted me to be involved in this to, on my end of it I, yeah. so i'm i'm so stoked about it I, i've loved what i've done so yeah. far so yeah what's your role in the committee uh well okay so my what i do is that i help out with the, the on the management side the uh, I, I do a lot of the paperwork okay. to be honest um and my role is the secretary um so uh my, my I love it. It's a laid-back role in terms of uh, I don't need to be on the on the on the front end. Uh, okay. We'll push John in front of in front of us. <laughs> it's a good um, person to push in front. Right. At the same time, I know I can I can get things done. I can manage things. So mm-hmm. so uh, I believe I provide uh, quite good support for for the rest of the committee there also to make sure that we that we at least. Uh, that, that we're that we stay organized and we 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 fulfill this promise that we've said that we want to we want to run an, uh, a well organized recreational league. You know, mm-hmm. there's no one in this league that's going anywhere. Uh, a a, we're, recre- we're just a recreational competitive league. That's what I've noticed so far. The, yeah, it's as competitive as it gets in Bangkok. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I've seen a few games where it's like in in the BIHL or not. I hadn't actually seen them. The lower level teams are very competitive with each other but when they play with some of the higher level teams yep. there is no competition you and we talked yep. about that in in the timeline i had i think right before i had you on the vlog yep. um but the games that i've watched in general except for the the spitfires versus the hooters mm-hmm. in general the, the games have been quite competitive so yep. no it, it hasn't that 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 was really the goal of of uh of putting the, this is a draft league so we mm-hmm. want the teams to be as even as possible and i mean we were high fiving. Sorry, uh, not the Spitfires. It, it was, was the Aware Hooters. The yeah. Aware Hooters, yeah. yeah. But but after the first night, you know, we were all high fiving the whole committee, all the yeah. team managers. We we basically we put this we put four teams together, and both games ended ended in a shootout. You know, after the first, uh, so we were like, okay, great, fantastic, the, excellent this, start. This, I, this is this is this is how we want it to be. Mm-hmm. We don't want the blowout wing wins and and so on. We we want tight, close games. Um, it is tough though. We've only we. we you know, we, we have 13 skaters on, on each team, mm-hmm. uh, one goalie on each team. Mm-hmm. That's really what we can muster at the moment. We would right. love to have a fifth team next year and then continue to grow this as as, uh, as the season goes on. Um, but uh, at the moment, we, we, we only have enough players for, for, for four teams. And mm-hmm. then we've got some really good substitute players as well that, that can fill in. Which, which you needed. do need, absolutely. Cause absolutely. There's like always someone. Week, yeah. yeah, there's always someone that, uh, that, that, that you know, has as a work-related uh, commitment or, mm-hmm. or something like that so we need to bring in subs as well and that's always the the tricky part and i think that's uh, that's one of the big reasons why why uh, why there has been why there's always a lot of arguments as well between players between mm-hmm. teams you know someone loses one player and picks up another one is that player of equal value or you know that that's yeah. always the discussion but yeah, it's it's a long season, so hopefully it, it evens out uh, over the over the course of the different games. I think it will. I mean, it's it's going to be competitive, and when it's competitive, there's obviously going to be tempers that flare. That's just a natural thing. But afterwards, you all sit down and have a beer together and say, "Hey, that was actually a good game," or yep. whatever. Hopefully, exactly. exactly. Um, so you decided to have a draft. What what yeah. brought that about? Well, that was in the, you know, going along with this concept of that we wanted four competitive teams. Mm-hmm. Um, we uh, yeah, we, we sat down with the team managers and and and, uh, and and basically ranked players and then put them together so that in, into four teams that we thought would would match up well against each other. Okay, okay, and where do you sit in that ranking? Uh, pretty low. Uh, to be <laughs> no, I'm uh, and I'm, I'm t- totally fine with that. Uh, that that was you know. It's always super difficult to sit down and rate a player, you know? right? Especially when you have a you have a committee of seven guys, and then mm-hmm. you have four team managers, mm-hmm. and then you have a list of of fifty eight players, mm-hmm. and then you're gonna put sort of a rank into those. 
and that is i mean no matter you know and they're all your friends right so how that do, makes how do, it how even difficult yeah it's, it's yeah. super difficult and that's why we've this year and we're most likely going to do that for for some time as well is that we're doing this within within you know one within closed doors uh -huh. um and and no one knows you know where they were sort of sort of sort of ranked there right um what we did this year was that we announced the first four picks of each team so the first 16 uh players mm -hmm. uh we did a bit of a of a promotional thing about that because it's always fun of course uh, yeah um to see you know who, who went number one and two and three etc um, and then the rest we, we went in, in alphabetical order. So, okay. so uh, yeah, my, my last name is O, and that's probably uh, <laughs> that's probably also quite equivalent to where I was in this in this ranking. Okay, <laughs> well, that that I guess makes sense. Right. So does that mean like so next season you're gonna have another draft, or are you gonna keep the teams together as they are? Are you gonna have trades in the off season? What's gonna happen? There's always a lot of movement uh, from one season to another, you know, players mm -hmm. being available, not available, uh, leaving Thailand, new players coming in. So right. there will most likely be, be another draft. Um, that that's the way the TWHL has been has, has been organized as well for for all those years when that was running, so um, I, I can see that still for for a couple of seasons that, that'll probably still be the still be the deal. Uh, it'd be great to be able to put you know teams together so that you can really start to build that team mentality as well mm -hmm. because the downside of this with the draft league of course is that you you change team every year right um but but there's so many other things that that plays into that as well we, we are looking for sponsorship of course so mm -hmm. from one year to another there might be different sponsors right today we've we, we got four sponsors super uh, appreciative of of the support that that the league has got there from from those four mm -hmm. um next year if we get you a can mention team, them if you'd like that's fine sure okay <laughs> uh, well we will I, but but yeah we got two we got two bars uh, okay. so we got uh, sports corner titanium uh, sponsoring one team and then we got hooters nana uh, sponsoring another one and then we got uh, two more of, um, two more sponsors two more teams we got aware software um, which is a yeah obviously a software company uh, running it yeah uh, with multiple locations but uh, but they have okay. uh, um, one of their offices is here in, in Bangkok and then we also got a we got a, a private sponsor that doesn't want to be uh, that doesn't really want it to be official, but we got a, a private sponsor as well that has its own hockey team. So it's okay. uh, quite cool as well. That's the Spitfires. Okay. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm fortunate enough to play on on Aware. We got awesome jerseys. Uh, we got a great team. Uh, we got all the jerseys. I was really impressed. Like when I came down for you guys' first game. I mean, you did it as a as a league. You got all the jerseys as a league versus the jerseys for the team. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The only reason I, I, I say that is because I can remember in the leagues that I've played in also seeing my dad playing in like we had an old timers league yep. or not we, I, I wasn't a part of that, but they had an old timers league and it was like your team had to provide you your uniforms. So it was like you had to go find your own sponsors, yep. whereas you're doing this on a league level instead of on a team level. Yep. Yeah, we'll see how this develops as well. I mean, uh, if you if you look at the the uh, the BIHL, uh -huh. it's very much like that. So you either find find a sponsor or you you, you source it yourself within mm -hmm. the team. Uh, some teams go go uh, takes it one step further and they got their own bags and T-shirts. <laughs> I've seen those <laughs> and, and, and everything. Uh, and that's Pratch, by the way. That's where uh -huh. we pulled him into the committee as, as okay. head of marketing. Uh, because we wanted someone Good with choice. sort of that that vision. Mm -hmm. uh, because even though this is very much a you know a recreational league, we still wanted to we still wanted this to be something that the the kids that are coming practicing at at uh, at Rama Nine, if if they stop and stay and, and and watch a little bit of the game, we want them to have this sort of ambition and dream about oh yeah, I want to play in the SHL uh, when I'm 16. So uh, if if we then skate around with you know a green and a red socks and and and. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know different color jerseys for everything that's it's it just doesn't, doesn't give look the same uh, doesn't, doesn't look as organized same. no yeah exactly. so i mean especially when you when you talk sponsorship and so on as well if you want to go out there you want to have a product uh, that you can sell that it's uh, you know first of all it needs to be a good on ice product but it yeah. also needs to look quite good you know mm -hmm. for for to attract sponsorship so i think uh, yeah we got Pratch in he spent a lot of time with uh, <clears throat> with the the manufacturer of the of the of the jerseys, the uniforms, okay, uh, made it look awesome, and uh, and uh, I think this will help us in the in the upcoming seasons as well. Uh, we we already have some indications of that. You know, if there's if there's another team or, or if one sponsor uh, uh, leaves for next season, we got some interest. Uh, oh, more that's sponsorship. great. So yeah, that'd be cool. 
Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, what is your role? Like you, you play for the aware. Yeah. Okay. What's your role on the team? I mean, well, wait, before I get into that, sorry. How did you decide on who was going to be the captains of the teams? I mean, you, mm. you, I'm <clears throat> guessing probably John and, and Scott are like the, the kind of the, the two front guys yep. of the SHL and then they decided on the other members Yeah. for uh, the, for the committee. Yeah, very much so. Um, I think, uh, uh, yeah, the John and and Scott Murray, they they're really the the, the founders of of uh, SHL. Um, I think the the persons that came on afterwards were were, were Alex, myself, and Alistair first mm -hmm. of all. Okay. Um, and then we also brought on uh, Pratch and and uh, Gia. Um, <clears throat> and that was that that came together quite quickly actually. Uh, and then we sat down and we said, okay, who would we want as captains, and what mm -hmm. are the criteria? <clears throat> because of course, there's there's many people to choose from. Yeah. And we had a short list of about ten guys, I would say. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, they all shared more or less the same the same profile. Uh, we wanted someone that uh, uh, that we felt that we could trust, uh, mm -hmm. someone that that's professional enough, um, that could. Uh, that could really chase down players for everything from payments to to confirming that they're going to play this week and so on. There, there's quite a lot of, of uh, behind the scenes that, that goes on to to organize this for oh, for, uh, and for the teams no to doubt. show up on time and, and on I, the right date. I have no doubt. Like I said, yeah. my dad was he was not just in hockey, but he was involved in a lot of different sports. I remember him trying to organize a touch football league for adults. Yeah. Um, he was doing a lot of behind the scenes just for the old timers league. Yes, he he was like in charge of not in charge, but he helped his art their his team. But he also was in charge of like the whole group. Yeah. Not in charge, but he helped a lot with that. Um, helping with like kids leagues, he helped. Um, what else did he do? He just like he was involved in so much trying to start t like softball teams and mm. getting everything organized and stuff. It, it's yeah. even as a group, it's a hard. Absolutely. It's a hard thing. You know, it doesn't so. matter if it's kids or adults. You know, yeah. It's more oh, or less no, the same work, work required. Yeah. Uh, so um, then, then when it came to the, to the captains, we we uh, we uh, I think we agreed very early on that these are these are the four guys. There was actually uh, there, was, there was some discussions back and forth. We had we had a player that wasn't sure he was going to play that we really wanted to, as as a captain as well, mm -hmm. but uh, has worked out really well with 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 the four that we that we have on board now. So okay. Yeah, it's been great. So, who are the captains and who do they play for? All right. So, uh, if we start with with uh, Hooters, we got Justin there. Okay. Um, Justin has been in, in, in Thailand for for uh, for a few years and and played both in the old TWHL as well as the BIHL. Okay. Um, one of the younger guys that that we felt was would probably grow with with the opportunity to to sort of chip in and, and help out the hockey community in in, in Bangkok. Um, yeah. So that's Hooters, and then for for Spitfires. Also, another another young guy. We thought that those guys would would uh, would actually uh, hit it off well and, and and maybe find ways to to develop and 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 uh, do something better for the for the league. Uh, that's that's uh, that's Brad. Mm -hmm. So uh, Brad is fairly new to 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 Bangkok. Uh, great guy to have on on the team uh, of the team of the management team of, of the league. Um, has a has a good way of, of relating to to the guys uh, both on his team and and and, uh, and the rest. So mm -hmm. a great addition as well. Good. Good solid defenseman. Um, and then uh, for for uh, for aware we got uh, Patrick, okay. um, fellow Swede. Uh, funny story actually when he he he's also fairly new to to Bangkok. has been there about a year. Okay. And the first time he showed up at the rink, I happened to be there as well. And uh, I was sitting across from him him in in the locker room. And then when he started to pull out his gear, I I, I didn't even know he was a Swede first. Uh, I think he was wearing a, a New York Rangers uh, hat. So I yeah, he does American. like the Rangers. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but then when he started to pull out his gear, I saw that he had he had this Swedish commercials all over his pants, his shell pants. So, uh, so then when I said uh, when I said hello, I said uh, because I recognized the team as well. Okay. So I said, uh, what years did you play there? Because my 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 cousin played actually for that team, and ends up that that he was uh, he was a D partner with with my cousin. Uh, you know, like I don't know. 15 years ago in in, okay. in, in Sweden here he, he played uh, he played professionally as well for for many years so that's a that's a, it's a pretty funny story actually that, that's uh, pretty cool he used to play with my cousin uh, also in a fairly small town in Sweden and mm -hmm. then uh, 15 years later he's my D partner now in in, uh, in Bangkok so awesome that's uh, yeah it's it's a small world mm. for sure um, 
yeah, we got a we got a really strong uh, decor on on the wear team. Uh, I think I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm ranked four there on, on the <laughs> on the uh, on the depth. I don't uh, know. You seem chart. To, you seem and to do quite well in the games in the two games that I've seen. So. Well, you know, when you play with Patrick, it's it's difficult not to to look uh, look lost out there. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we got two really good uh, Thai defensemen as well, uh, okay. both Champ and and Jean. Two. Uh, Two big guys that, that can dominate, shoot shoot the puck hard, and, okay. and uh, yeah, so we we got a we got a good uh, defensive core, and then we got some veteran presence as well from from Stan, the mm-hmm. Slovakian ambassador. So okay. uh, our, our D core is is uh, is quite strong, uh, and then we got some some really skilled forwards that that can that can score as well. So so. Uh, I think the wear team we have a we have a good squad this first year. Yeah, you guys look good. I mean, it it was a. Had to have been a tough loss that first game, you know. But I was for sure. We we just couldn't capitalize on our, our chances, <laughs> and uh, I felt that uh, Titanium came away with uh, with uh, with one there. So we're looking forward to meeting them again. How long Ti- before Titanium you Titanium is is, is uh, has Sack Garf- Garfolo as as their their captain as well. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Another guy with a big heart. Uh, with uh, he spends a lot of time at the rink, and he has uh, ever since he. he he, uh, him and his wife moved to to Bangkok. He runs uh, kids practices okay. um, on uh, Saturday mornings and Tuesday Tuesday nights. He also runs a a, a hockey program for for uh, for a school. Uh, don't know exactly the name of the school. British Columbia something international school. Okay. So uh, some Canadians on there, and and uh, he's got some some support from the school to run run a kids program for for uh, I think uh, kids under age of. Eight, eight, age of ten. Oh, okay. So he's got, he's got a, a team there of, of mostly ties. Um, Get them all uh, ready for the SHL. Right. <laughs> so uh, you know, in, in 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 eight nine years, maybe they'll they're, they'll play in the SHL. Hopefully. Excellent. So, you got how do you practice? I mean, I've I don't know anything we about. Don't. Oh, we you don't. don't. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, right. <laughs> right. No, um, that's got to be kind of difficult when it comes game time. You not don't really get a chance to work together. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, but it, that is. I mean, a lot of the players are are, are showing up for for Shinny on Thursdays or okay. stuff like that. But but as a team, uh, we we uh, we haven't really had those those opportunities or, or or taking those opportunities to practice. We did arrange for a couple of training sessions, but it's it's difficult to get mm. everyone there at the same time. So yeah. I think. What happens naturally in this league is that uh, because there's only four teams and it runs actually for for six months, um, there will be a lot of games and games against the same team. So, mm-hmm. so um, as the season progresses, um, you, you get more familiarized with with your own players and also yeah. the other teams, and you can start to play with a little bit more of a of, of a, more of a tactical game, perhaps um, against certain certain teams that you that you're versing. Okay, so now I want to talk about the aware. Yeah. Like I said, like I asked you, that had to have been a really tough loss that first game, losing in overtime in the overtime shootout. Yeah, you guys were ahead. What yeah, happened? Yeah. Oh, we were. We just couldn't put any uh, more pucks behind uh, behind Gabor. He kind of gave them some some uh, some extra life there, and then they 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 managed to chip one in at, at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think they got two quite. Fluky goals. I think they scored in the, <laughs> in the first goals. in the first minute. You know, uh, I think uh, our team was still still sleeping, and and and, okay. and John was so high on adrenaline for his you know first SHL game as the, <laughs> as the president. So, and you know, we talked about that before. We said, okay, if we're gonna let someone score, we better let John score. You know? oh, he, he is the president after all. Okay. So I think that was uh, we we gave him that one. Okay, and uh, then last week. Yeah, amazing recovery. Well, yeah, I think that's that's uh, when some of the frustration maybe. Uh, so I, I think there was someone whispering that we were running the score up a little bit too too high there in the end. Uh, but <laughs> I, I didn't feel it was like that. It was more that you know every shot almost went in in the end. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Hooters got a got a great goalie in, in Dream, and uh, you got to shoot a lot on him. And in, in the end, we we uh, I think every other every other puck went in there in the third period. So that's what it was looking like. But like I said, knowing goaltender, I'm I'm a defenseman myself, so yeah. I kind of get to know my goaltenders. Once something breaks in yeah. a game, it's really hard for them to come back, and you've got no way to pull your goaltender to get yeah to replace him. Do you know no, what I mean? No, so that's it. Yeah, only got one. No, it, it was you know it was it was a lot closer than what it what it looked on the score sheet. I, mm-hmm. I felt at least uh, playing that game. Mm-hmm. 
uh, Hooters got a good team as well. They they miss they they are, they are missing two of, of of their better guys. Okay. Um, as well, so so I think uh, they their record doesn't look so good after the first Not couple yet, of but games. There's, there's but, a game but, coming up, but that that will change mm-hmm. when when those guys come back into the lineup. So it should be good. Okay, so now you got a game on Monday. Who do you play? So we play Spitfires. Okay. Um, and uh, it's going to be interesting because they have a lot of players uh, actually missing for this game. Uh, oh, really? They've got five guys missing. Okay. So uh, there'll be quite a few substitute players um, on, on, on that team. Something um, to capitalize on or try to capitalize on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's see what we can do. Uh, they, got, uh, they got the leading goal scorer uh, in, in Adrian there from the mm-hmm. blue line. So we've got to find a way to shut him down. Um, we're also missing a couple of guys, actually, and we'll, okay. we'll, we'll have a substitute goalie also in, in there. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, but um, looking forward to the game. It's, now, it's I know fun. That now they're a bigger team. to look forward to. Yeah, I know they're a bigger team. That They like to use their size and push guys around. Yeah. You being a defenseman, how are you going to deal with that? Yeah, uh, I think we, we, are, we can handle ourselves, too, uh, especially on the, on the back end. We're, we're quite... Uh, um, yeah, we, we I think we can we can handle uh, we can handle ourselves. Okay. I think it's more uh, our forwards. Um, we have some forwards that are that are very skilled, uh, but uh, on the smaller side. Mm-hmm. So we got to find a way to to beat them with our speed. There, I think. Like like Gretzky used to do. That's right. <laughs> and no Gretzky's in this lead, though. I can tell you. <laughs> no, but I mean, you've got you do have. I'll be honest. From what I've seen, you got some really good, good, well-skilled players. I mean, no, no absolutely, absolutely. And I think, I mean, <clears throat> that's you got to have a. We we try to have a very long-term view on this league. This is we we to be honest, we started this to to uh, for ourselves in, in mm-hmm. many ways. You know, we okay. wanted to to uh, get back to playing in a in a in a league again. But at the same time, as a committee, we we've we've tried to set this up so that in the event of of someone leaving or you know that th- this league will still carry on mm-hmm. and that we're not just setting this up for the 2016 2017 season we're actually setting it up so that it will be successful uh, long term okay so uh, of course trying to have have people in the committee that 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 are committed long term and that hopefully will you know stay in banker for a while but but like i mentioned in the case with with, with alex if if he's moving on mm-hmm. uh, next year we want to be able to slot someone else in that can that can uh, you know at least try to fill up the the void that that he would leave um and by being organized in in a certain way uh, hopefully that will make it easier next year for whoever comes in if he leaves mm-hmm. yep. mm- okay I- i'm excited to see I'm excited to be a part of it from the beginning, and I'm really looking forward to seeing where it goes. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, I mean, what you have bring into this is, has been more than what we could ever imagine as well. I mean, we we were talking about when we when we met the first time. Uh, we actually had a Skype meeting, myself, uh, John, and 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 uh, and Scott, and we were talking about okay, what's our ambition for this league? And we were saying that well, we need to have a Facebook page, and we mm-hmm. need to have a have a web page to show the stats. And that's where we that's where we were at, um, and now we got an official podcaster. We got an official photographer. Uh, we are we are talking to to magazines about getting some articles in. Really, there. that's yeah. awesome. So uh, I mean, a- again, this is this is uh, this is just to try to increase the interest so that we can, for example, get more sponsorships so mm-hmm. that we can reduce player fees. Um, but we also would like to, of course, uh, try to build up a, a hockey community so that that. If someone is planning to move to Bangkok, it should not be a reason uh, that oh well, I cannot play hockey there, so mm-hmm. I'll, I'll move to I'll move to Hong Kong or or Singapore in, in, instead. Yeah, there should be something here at least so that that players of uh, more or less all levels could could uh, could enjoy um, either playing the SHL or BIHL. Well, like I said, I was just completely ecstatic when when first John emailed me and then got you in on the email and me- going to meet you guys and just hearing what your plans were and. I could. I had a feeling of the excitement that you guys really wanted for the SHL, yeah. and for me to be a part of that is it's uh, it's awesome. I just yeah. I, I'm excited. I it's one of those things like it's like I wish I just had so much. I wish I had more time to do this and this and this. But I know. I mean, that's uh, uh, you know some have have uh, some have more or less than others before before retirement. But uh-huh. but I know that some guys maybe. Uh, on the SHL committee are, are thinking about that this could be something that they they, they could do uh, once they retire uh, John being one of them uh, but but uh, in, in my case I, I see this more <laughs> or less just as 
as uh, you know a hobby on the side happy mm-hmm. to be able to help out somewhere and um, and we have to remember this that this is you know no no one is getting paid here yeah for absolutely. for 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 doing any of this so so um, just to be able to keep some some fun stuff happening on on our web page on the Facebook page to have the photos everyone loves to see the the, the photos doesn't matter you know how yeah, old you are I mean it's it's still fun to see see the photos from mm. the from the from the game that Mr Nagama is is taking. And then now this is a total new level with the with the podcast and everything. And, <laughs> new and for you, you, you new you already, for me. So. Right, you already got some some uh, you know quality YouTube material there with with Gabor's uh, interview. Uh, others, he he uh, was between Gabor and Adrian in that first week, and then talking to the coach or the captains. Yeah, you know, and then Ioni last week. It's it's great. And then I had DJ on the show, yeah. you know, and then you coming on. This is like so awesome for me. So no, I, I think those those player interviews are, are a lot of fun. They're good for 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 a chuckle the day after the game there when you when you when you watch the uh, the podcast. So that's good. Yeah, I'm gonna get myself more <laughs> organized and get those out for you guys sooner than I have. But yeah, no, it's, it's great. It's great. You're also doing this. Uh, uh, voluntarily, so yeah. <laughs> so it's but I I love it. You know, I mean, I was. I loved playing hockey and I had two years in a row with some coaches that I just didn't get along with. And I kind of felt for me, I had reached my peak level. I didn't foresee myself playing hockey in college, you know, something that when I was younger, I wanted to do. But as I got older, I kind of saw where my level was at compared to a lot of the guys that I was playing with. Mm -hmm. I wasn't who my dad was. He was a great hockey player. A lot of the guys that my dad coached or that my dad knew, I knew for a fact I wasn't at that level, you know, like David Christian, Phil Vercota, guys like that. And I'm looking at and going, yeah, I'm nowhere even near that. You know, I'm kind of, I'm at my level here. So, (laughs) but no, but that's the, that's a good thing. I think there there was, I, I must say, I mean, we, we, we could not accommodate every single player that wanted to mm. play in the SHL this this season, um, and that was tough. You know, we, we had some players that that basically were were not drafted, that did not yeah. slot in within those uh, the, the allocated spots that we had. There, thirteen skaters and one goalie per team. Uh, all of them could could then be slotted over to 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 subs, so mm-hmm. not a big issue there. But but of course, if you if you really want to play regularly, um, we we would need to have uh, more teams. Yeah. So um, did you not have enough for five teams, or no, was this something like we didn't? We okay. if we would have gone to five teams, we would have had no subs whatsoever. Okay. And, and you need it just, subs. It, yeah. it wouldn't have worked. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then we would have been in a, in a situation where where we would have to ask players to play two games and mm-hmm. play for different teams just to be able to to yeah. fill out the squads and it, it, it wouldn't have worked yeah you don't so, want to kind of put yourself in that situation no. especially right now just starting out so exactly so i think we will hopefully get there uh, mm-hmm. eventually there's already been some some new interest and i think uh, uh, we did not pull a lot of players from from the bihl um there's still there's still some good talented ties that i think would would be good additions to to the to the shl as well uh, but I think that they're kind of sort of waiting and feeling it out and seeing, okay, what is this league all about? Mm-hmm. And then hopefully the the ties that are playing on on the SHL now says that you know you know what this is this is a good level of hockey and this is what we need to be able to develop and and this is good for the national team and so on as well. So, so uh, Thailand has a national get... team. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Really? Team. Yeah, I'll yeah. be absolutely honest. I had no idea they had a national team. I mean, I haven't. No. Since I've been in Thailand, I, I asked a little bit about hockey like years and years and years ago. It sounds like I've been here for ages, but yeah. um, and I think I talked to a guy who played for the TWHL. Mm-hmm. Um, he said they played someplace. I don't even remember where it was now. He's like, yeah, if you get some skates, come out and play. And I'm like, I'm kind of done with hockey. Yeah. But watching you guys play, it's like, oh, I could play, but... I also I want to I want to do what I'm doing at the same yeah. time you know and I know if I'm a player I kind of wouldn't be able to do some of the things that I can do and stuff like that yeah. but no but. for sure there's a Thai national team uh, they uh, you know it's a little bit sporadic you know if there's mm. if they have a tournament if they have any games coming up then they will they will organize some some practice sessions and whatever okay. and every now and then they go for a tournament and so on but it's uh, the 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 Ice Hockey Federation of Thailand is is uh, a bit anonymous at the moment, mm-hmm. and um, what, what we have discussed, what we've talked about, is like you know one idea could be that that uh, the fifth team in the SHL is the Thai national team, for example. 
that that'd be interesting or yeah, have an all-star team against right. the national team. I mean at, at least make sure that everyone that plays in the in the in the on the national team are also in the uh, SHL in, mm-hmm. in in some form either mm-hmm. as a permanent player on one of the four teams or as as a the sub, sub. Um, to to make sure that they get the the competitive games because because it's it's tough for them. I mean they they, oh, they, they can practice against each other or they might, you know, uh, pull some guys from from the BIHL and then try to run a practice every now and then but I think if they if they want a good quality of or a good frequency of, of good quality games then then maybe the SHL would would uh would help in that regard. I think so, absolutely. Mm. So I, I want to I want to thank you for coming on. I have this thing that I do with most of my I say most of my guests now because my guest last week said she wouldn't do it, but um I like to have my my guests do what I call an always remember and just kind of leave them with something positive. Would you like to do that for okay, me? Okay, good. I was, I was afraid you were going to ask me to sing or dance or something. Like that. <laughs> that's uh, next time. That's next time, yeah. Okay. Uh, what was that again? It, the, the always remember. Always remember. Well, okay, well, uh, I think for, especially since we're talking, speaking to the hockey community there, community here, um, I, I would like for everyone to always remember that we are extremely fortunate to be able to play the, the game of ice hockey in, in, in Thailand. And try to appreciate those who, who uh, who spend their 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 free time uh, volunteering, uh, trying to trying to make that uh, uh, you know make it possible for them to play hockey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot. It's been great having you on the show. Thanks very much, Tom. All right. Bye. Thank you. It's time for SHL news. SHL news week three. We had some really exciting games down at the rink this week. In our first game, we had Sports Corner Titanium facing off against Hooters Nana. Sports Corner Titanium went into this week undefeated. In their first game, they beat the Aware 3-2 in an overtime shootout coming in from behind. And then in the second game, they faced the Sukhumvit Spitfires and they beat them 4-2. Their top goal scorers are Yoni Hanonen, number 92, and John Sheknovsky, number 18, both with two goals apiece. Their top playmakers are Yari Erekinenen, number 95, and Remo Nefenegar, number 16, with two assists apiece. Their goaltender, Gebor Toth, number 50, has had some great games stopping 32 out of 36 shots. Hooters Nana has had a really tough start in the SHL. In the first week, they lost to the Sukhumvit Spitfires, who came back from behind and then beat them in an overtime shootout, 6-5. And then they really struggled against a really powerful team, the Aware, who beat them 7-2. Hooters' top goal scorers are Justin Denis, number 71, and Mu Tengsakul, number 78, both with two goals apiece. And their top playmaker is Steven Sproul, number 22, who has two assists. Their goaltender, Dream Uncle Patsanuk, number 29, has had 40 saves out of 52 shots so far. He was replaced this week by Neng Prowez. In the first period, it didn't look so good for Hooters Nana, as they were down 4-1. to one. But they came back strong in the second period, pulling ahead of Sports Corner Titanium and finishing them off in the third period with a final score of 7-5. A great way for Hooters Nana to get their first win against the only undefeated team in the league after Week 2 and winning in such a decisive manner. Goals for the Sports Corner Titanium came from Zach Gruffalo, number 71, DJ Sherman, number 10, Yoni Hanonen, number 92, and John Sheknovsky, number 18, all scoring in the first period, with Remo Nefenegar scoring their only goal in the third period. Goals for Hooters Nana. In the first, Paul Stoddart, number 44, got his first goal of the night, and then Hooters Nana dominated in the second period and then held off Sports Corner Titanium in the third. Paul Stoddart, number 44, got a hat trick tonight with Donnie Kerfoot, number 71, scoring two goals and an additional goals coming from Stephen Iana, number 22, and Justin St. Denis, number 71. Neng Prowez replaced Dream in the Nets this week for Hooters Nana, coming up with 23 saves for the night, and Gabor wasn't as hot as he has been in the past week with only 16 saves. The Rolling Stone player of the game was Paul Stoddart, making the first hat-trick in the league this season. 
and I talked to him after the game. So I have the player of the game with us today. Uh, this is Paul from the Hooters. You got your first win of the season. Yeah, that's awesome. Great to get the first win, uh, win of the season. You know, first two games uh, were a little bit tough. Uh, first game we were winning most of the game and lost the nail biter. Uh, second game we got blown out a bit, so it was nice to get the first win finally. Yeah. Yeah, you guys did a hell of a job tonight. What do you think contributed to that? Um, I think having our, uh, a few of our, our, our better players back from, uh, from being away for the first couple of games was nice. Um, I think just getting used to the uh, team, you know, pl players on the line. So we're, we're finally, finally learning each other's, um, where each other are a little bit on the ice and just you know, working a little bit hard in the corners. And yeah, it's good. All right, well, congratulations. Thanks very much. In our second game, we had Aware facing off against Sukhumvit Spitfires. Aware made a strong second showing last week, coming back after a tough overtime shootout loss against Sports Corner Titanium by completely dominating the Hooters Nana with a score of 7-2. Aware's top goal scorer so far has been Patrick Lundback, number 51, and Brandon Vick, number 2, both with two goals apiece so far this season. Their playmakers so far this season are Tan Limpenpet, number 26, and Devin Michael, number 39, Christian Olofsson, number 85, and Stanislav Opelia, number 27, all with one assist. The Sukhumvit Spitfires had a great opening game in the first week of the season by beating Hooners Nana in an overtime shootout, 6-5. But then they struggled against Sports Corner Titanium last week and dropped a hard-fought game by 4-3. The Sukhumvit Spitfire's top goal scorer is Adrian Myers, number 11, with three goals, with Jeff McIntyre right behind him with two goals. Their top playmaker is Ernesto Bauer, number 6, with two assists for the season. Aware had an even more stellar game this week than they did last week, scoring goals in all three periods. Devin Michael, number 39, came out with two goals. Corey Day, number 14, Tor Chatsawan, number 65, both with goals and an assist, and goals from Ryan Haynes, number 19, Tan Limpenpet, number 26, and Yin Ten Tenrokiat, number 91. Jason Kosmeyer, number 30, hung in there with 21 saves out of 28 shot, and Lance Parker, number 30, filling in for Yves Gibralt, tallied a shootout with 16 saves on the night. It may look bad for the Sukhumvit Spitfires, the last two weeks, but they've been battling with their regular players being away and have had to do the best they can with the subs that they can get onto the ice. A Rolling Stone player of the game was Yin Tanriokiat, number 91, but sadly he had a prior engagement and didn't have a chance to sit down and talk with me. Our games next week on Monday, December 12th, will be the start of our rematches. For the first game at 8.30, we'll have the Hooters Nana facing off against the Sukhumvit Spitfires. Hooters Nana will be looking to avenge their overtime loss against the Sukhumvit Spitfires, while the Spitfires will be looking for a break in their losing streak. Both teams are hungry for a win this week. Should be a great matchup. For our second game, we have the Aware facing off against Sports Corner Titanium. The Sports Corner Titanium will be looking to recover from their loss against Hooners Nana, while the Aware will be fighting to keep their winning streak alive. I expect to see lots of action this game. Thanks for watching this week, and I'll see you at the rink. Please rate my show or leave a comment or make suggestions of what you would like me to talk about. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Dom Dumas, on Twitter at Dom Dumas, or on Instagram, Dom underscore Dumas. Thanks a lot.